grab your pillow because it's gonna be a long one that's what she said <laughs> God, I'm so inappropriate. I apologize. Hey guys, it's Alina Gibbs here and today I want to talk with you about binge eating. Now that we're all staying at home, have 24-7 access to our fridge, I don't know about you guys, but this period has tested my binge eating problem and I, and I don't know, am I the only one? Am I? The reason why I want to talk about this is because I think that people overlook how critical and, and bad how binge eating can affect your mental health, your obviously physically it'll affect you, and just generally your perception about yourself and your relationship with food. In this video, I do want to cover some of the tips that I've personally found very effective for me and also tips I found online that I think will be very very good if you are experiencing the same problem with binge eating and want to overcome it. I've personally experienced binge eating way back in 2014 going back to <laughs> sorry so going back to 2014 that was when i started my fitness journey that is when i started doing a lot of cardio it's a cardio bunny i did insanity after completing insanity i went for my first ever half marathon and that was really amazing um i also lost a lot of weight and this was because not only i was becoming more physically active but also i was cutting down a lot of calories once i've actually weighed my food and be okay this is a safe 600 calories dinner I wouldn't even finish the whole thing. I'd subconsciously think, oh no, to cut down more weight, I need to like eat less of what I'm eating. So I was kind of tricking myself to eating lesser and lesser. And there was even a point when I, I used to order like Subway and I was still eating meat at the time. I would order like the turkey breast with lots of greens, no sauce and the either bread or wrap. And sometimes I would just either eat the half of the bread or the wrap. I wouldn't eat the wrap. I'll like open it and like eat it as a salad and like I'll just waste the wrap. And of course after all of that, I ended up losing weight from, I was down to 46, 47 kg. So crazy about wanting to see the abs and it was until the point that my body couldn't handle the restriction my body couldn't handle it and it started to fight back by making me have these urges to want to overeat so how it happened was there was a few nights where i, w I couldn't go to sleep and my body and my mind just like constantly craving the thought of like brownies pancakes and like sugars I started thinking a lot about donuts so the next morning I got into my car and I drove to the petrol station not to fill up the car but because there was a Dunkin Donuts and I bought a box of six donuts and mind you that again I was eating clean forever and to buy this bunch of donuts I'm just like I feel like I'm committing a crime. I feel like I'm cheating on myself. I called up my family and I'm just like, Hey, I'm at the gas station. Do you want any donuts? Even though I already bought donuts and they were like, No, no, it's okay. And I'm like, Okay. And I ended up eating all of them while driving on the way back home. And I felt so guilty because I was praising about how healthy, how much weight I lost to my family that it looked really bad if I was coming home to, with an empty box of donuts so I like hit the donut in my backpack and I just went to my room and I shredded the donut box and then put it into my bin and I scattered it like I had two bins one in the bathroom one outside and I separated it and like it was like as if I'm trying to hide a crime scene it was so bad and that really just became the beginning and then at night every night I would wait until all my family members were asleep so once I got into the kitchen I'm like okay tend to start cooking and I like I swear I felt like my body was suddenly taken over by something else and someone else and I was watching myself move from a third perspective from a third person and I could see myself opening the fridge I naturally just knew what to get I took out ingredients suddenly I was making pancakes and like I wasn't even stopping there I made like a stack when I say stack like eight to ten pieces of like small to medium sizes not only did i just eat the pancakes on its own i eat like took not even like i didn't even take like a 
tablespoon and spread. It was more like I took the entire tub of butter and I would not cut pancake. I take the whole pancake and I'll slab it and literally scoop up butter with my pancake so the pancake was a spoon and I just eat the entire thing each pancake piece with a slab of butter and that happened for a few nights and then my bot and then the next week it was like okay something else and they start baking like this was 2 to 3 a.m and i was baking as if i was so dedicated i i you know made the brownies from scratch and i'll just eat the entire thing like straight away and eventually it caught on to my main meals when i used to only eat like the salad and the protein then I started double the carbs and then started putting more oil into my food and putting back more salt into my food and it just like affected my entire meal my entire diet and it took about one whole month and of constant binge eating on like potato chips making fresh baked goods from the kitchen at late at night yeah my body just like really caught on and i gained twice the weight that i lost like bro bro it was so bad i was so embarrassed especially at the time that was when i started uni and so the first semester people saw me as that skinny girl who was cardio bunny and super active and then to the second semester i was like a clump yeah i know that was a really really long explanation about my background but i think it's very important to tell you guys about it so you know that what I'm about to tell you is definitely something that I found very effective and of course it's not going to be 100% I do want to make sure that you do not have this perfectionist mindset and to take it as just part of your journey and yeah just to also let you know that you're not alone so let's get into the tips now first thing first don't diet unless you really 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 enjoy it now again this goes out to people who are dieting for competition purposes or maybe they just enjoy it it's fine but i would highly recommend you seek out a professional first about this so you can understand your body not just about like your weight your height and your basic bmi but also about your hormones i think people underestimate how hormones can play a huge part into the development of your body your mentality seriously go find somebody who's either a nutritionist or even a fitness instructor with a very complete profile of female clients or just generally clients who have overweight issues or eating disorder issues to assist you with this problem. I definitely learned my lesson with calorie counting, not saying that I don't do calorie counting anymore but I'm just a lot more mindful about approaching towards it now the second thing is having a very regular eating pattern i've heard in the past people saying or even now time to time i hear them saying that hey if i skip my breakfast and i wake up later and skip it and i go straight to eating lunch wouldn't it be good for weight loss because i'm eating less calories now by right in terms of the numbers of what you take in sure is a lot less but you also have to consider how much calories are also being burnt as well so how do you balance that out and the second point is also about your metabolic rate with you eating less it's obviously going to reduce the rate because your body is not being trained to to break down food consistently so when you disrupt that it will definitely disrupt you know your ability to break down food faster and which obviously allows you to burn your calories faster the thing is that don't just think about frequency but also when you eat at your time of your breakfast your lunch your dinner or even you have a supper fine make sure you really eat don't be like me and be like i'm gonna eat half of my lunch and then i'm gonna be hungry anyway like duh <laughs> i'm sorry if i'm looking down a lot i actually have a book where i write down all of my notes because i think it's really important that i don't go off track <laughs> focus uh, so number three is practicing mindfulness making sure that you are listening to your body you're eating intuitively so one of the things that i definitely did was really all out just eat whatever i want in terms of my i was listening to my body and my body was just still in that craving that i want to continue eating and i allowed it instead of saying like no and i still do it it was more like okay i hear you and i'm listening to you and I accept that this is what I need to go through and to reach to the other end of the point of my goal. So I ate, I ate and of course there were unhealthy meals and 
and there were times I ate just lots of fruits, lots of baked potatoes, lots of rice, lots of noodles. And over time, like my my body felt more comfortable and I toned down. But I just listened to my body the whole time when I was trying vegan food. And yeah, it, it helped a lot. Now the fourth point is to just drink water more regularly. Every hour, have a glass of water. I know it sounds like, oh my god, but I have a small bladder. Like, me too, bro. I feel you. I feel you. But like, it's so much better to keep yourself hydrated. Because sometimes you're actually hungry. Not because you want food. It's actually you're thirsty. And actually when you're thirsty, you think of having sugar, having sweets. And you just can't make a decision very clearly because you're dehydrated. And so having water allows you to have more control on your mind and just ensure that you're not acting out because of another reason, you know? It's like, what if I ate but I never felt satisfied? It's because I never actually wanted to eat in the first place. Like, <laughs> Now, my other point is to eat lots of fat. <laughs> is eat lots of fiber because of course fiber helps you make you feel more full and so you're less likely to overeat eating plant-based food helped that a lot because i just stacked on a lot of fruits a lot of vegetables a lot of whole wheat grains and yeah i think eventually like i kept on making myself feel so full that i felt so jelly that i didn't want to overeat anymore you know what i mean now another thing that I found very very good was definitely don't grocery shop for trigger foods. Like when I say trigger foods, like for example me, I know that if I see a chocolate biscuit, that's a very specific trigger food I know about myself. If I see a biscuit with a layer of chocolate or like some wafer with chocolate, I know I will get triggered and it will make me challenge mentally inside like I want more, I want more, I want more, I should, I should, I should. So I try my best to not have that in my house, in my kitchen. But just generally you want to practice not having your trigger foods in your house. Now does it mean that you can have other snacks in your house? To be honest, I think it's okay because it's more about the specific kind of foods that trigger that binge eating problem. Not all food can do that to you. Like for example, I can have this biscuits in the kitchen and all that but I don't get so triggered to eat biscuits. I'm like, eh, they're okay. I'll eat like one or two but I never end up overeating them. But when it comes to chocolate biscuits or chocolate wafers or chocolate, I get all like, I want. <laughs> Another important factor that I didn't actually think about this, I was looking up um, online just for examples and like, ideas and it was about sleep and it's true, when you don't have enough sleep, you're naturally just a lot more tired and to have more energy, your body, okay, to have energy, I need to break down some food to get that energy and so you naturally, your body will tell you go eat, eat, eat. So Ben and I were practicing this thing, it was a really good idea that was recommended by him, was to try sleep at a certain time and just don't set up an alarm and see what time you wake up naturally and practice that until you start seeing a pattern and then you then you know okay this is the number of hours i naturally need when i sleep so of course it's hard to practice this when you want to do on a weekday because you have to go to work and you can't afford to miss that so i recommend just every weekend just do that for a month or two months to have a proper amount of data to rely on and that's when you start knowing how much sleep you need. My last point is actually talking about it. This is the reason why I wanted to make YouTube videos. Not only just to talk about how to make yourself fit physically, how to cook certain recipes, and how to just enjoy your life, but most importantly, to bring conversations and topics like this that's hard to talk about. And to be honest, I think my process of overcoming binge eating disorder would have been a lot shorter if I actually talked about it like for the longest time like people knew everybody knew like I even had my family members talk and whispered about it behind my back like not in a mean way like bitch it was more like they were sharing their concerns like it is it, it's, it's really hard and yeah I, I just didn't talk about it like Everybody knew. Everyone knew that I gained a lot of weight. I knew that I gained a lot of weight. I just didn't know how to talk about it. It was one of those elephant in the room, you know? You're like, okay. <laughs> so, And I think what's worse is that I think out of all the people, only like, I think my sister and another friend who unfortunately were not friends anymore were the ones who approached me about it and said, that, hey, it's okay. And like, your body is fine. And like, and like, it sucked that. <laughs> Sorry, I feel emotional. But it sucked that, um, that... It was so embarrassing that I couldn't 
or wanted to talk about it with anybody. I think that if I had to go back and redo what I did, I would definitely have wanted to make it more okay to talk about it, to seek out for help and not be afraid to ask for advice. Like for the longest time, I just kept myself in the corner because I was just so ashamed, I was embarrassed. I was scared about what people were going to think about me. I was scared about also food. Like I didn't have a good relationship with food at that time. I thought that, oh my God, like I just can't eat anymore because I feel like I don't deserve to eat. Like I'm just destroying my body every time I eat. And oh, it was really bad. Like it was so, so bad. That is all I have to say in this video. I don't want to go too long because it's quite long already <laughs> but I hope you find this video very useful I do want to start bringing more content about mental health I deeply believe that your mental health is as important as your physical health and not just for your fitness journey but generally your career and your self-development you know so I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please like the video please also subscribe so that I know that I should continue making videos and um, yeah I hope to talk to you guys soon and have a beautiful day ahead. Mwah.